John here, guys, and today we're talking about the Redux Air Raven 5 inch racing frame. The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint. This is a very compact, ultra light weight. 5 inch racing that can fit up to a 5.2 inch prop and it has a really nice set of design features. It's really interesting to me to look at a racing frame from around 2017. This is a Hyperlight Floss 2.1 and see how far the evolution of these designs have come. Um, this thing is so light, so small. If uh, you remember the heads up um, 533 uh, switchback frame that I reviewed on the channel that is so light that has won a lot of those championships uh, piloted by the majority of the people at the multi GP nationals. This frame is actually three grams lighter, uh, if you believe that. But I think that because of the design, it's still gonna retain a lot of that rigidity um, both of these are really excellent options. Um, if you kind of put them side by side, you can see that there are similar arm geometry, but that the Redux Air is stretched a little bit um, longer to get a little bit of more prop separation, just a tad, maybe five or 10 mils. But I actually like the feel of that. Maybe because I was used to flying floss frames, I like a little bit of stretch. Um, it does have you know, a, a nice uh, protected camera holder up here um, that is TPU printed as well as a turtle mode fin that's actually printed pretty well. There's a couple of different options for antenna mounts. There's an SMA one or a stubby holder one. The dimensions on here are gonna be five mils for the arm, two mils for the top and bottom plate. And the other thing that I like about this frame is that it has a metal cage design. Now those metal cage um, arm sandwich plate designs were kind of pioneered by the FPB Flight Club team that is now unfortunately closing up their doors. Uh, then after that you saw the Floss 3 have a similar design like that. I actually really like that type of design feature. It gives you a couple of different things. I'm going to just move this top plate out of the way momentarily. And you can see this one is designed um, in kind of a nice skeleton way. So it saves some weight, but also offers you strength. Really, this, the strong parts that you want are just at the ends where it sandwiches the arms in place. I'll show a picture. This one has super tight tolerances. It was designed really nicely to where those arms fit perfectly in there. And they're also touching the strength by having all of those things kind of reinforce against each other. The other thing I like about these metal design mill, um, mid plates is that you don't need press nuts. A frame design like this, you have these press nuts in there. Um, this, you can actually thread this aluminum plate and your stack screws just go straight into there. And so there's no need for um, additional press nuts. That's probably a, where you get a little bit of that weight savings. Um, you're held in by three screws, so it's a really firm sandwich. There's absolutely no play in these arms. I think that the way that this is designed, this arm is not likely to pop out. You can see this front part that um, the arm sits into is, it, go, it runs down probably two mils, so it's really gonna hold that in place. Um, I like that the top plate is designed with a variety of mounting options. You have a couple of different zip tie holes at the back. It seems to be more and more popular that people are no longer running stubbies at races. Um, they're actually just putting one antenna on there and even if they're assigned another antenna direction, they're just flying it. I think um, Heads Up actually indicated that he didn't bother changing the last time. I don't know if that's recommended. These guys uh, over at Redux Air did mention that they may be selling a package that comes with two top plates. That way you could have um, a left and a right hand antenna top plate and a connector that goes to your VTX to where you can just swap these very quickly if you did want to do that. Uh, another nice feature that I like about this frame is that it actually comes with a set of stack screws. I don't know why, but I just love when frames come with stack screws. Um, that are sized specifically for that frame. Of course, I have like buckets and buckets and buckets of random hardware 
but finding the height that's perfect for each individual frame because they all have different heights is kind of a pain so this kind of takes the guesswork out of there in fact i'd say on the bench when i'm building sometimes that takes like an extra 20 30 minutes because you always have to like try different links take it apart put it back together speaking of that i really like that all of the stack screws for um 30 by 30 or 20 by 20 are fully accessible so you have this uh, metal sandwich plate in the middle the bottom plate is the other part of the sandwich for those arms that does two things it makes it accessible to be able to adjust your stack at any time and it also gives you a specific channel for your battery strap to go into uh, i mean a lot of the frames are designed to just kind of run your battery strap under the stack which depending on what height stack you get can be a little fiddly and you don't want to like pull off any of those um, ESC components in a hard crash. This eliminates all that. It makes it very easy to just put your battery strap on and go. Um, you might also see in here that I am, I do have the Redux Air 20 by 20 ESC in there. I'm gonna have a full review of that, but I wanted to show how well it fits in this frame. I really like the way that this ESC is designed. It's a bit wider on the side. That is a couple of things. It lets them have high quality FETs on here and an interesting design that is supposed to add to reliability and performance. And the other thing that it does is when you put your 20 by 20 flight controller on there, the motor pads are a little bit further out so that if you wanted to solder, repair a motor, swap a motor, you can actually access all of the ESC pads without having to remove the flight controller. Um, so that gives you still a 20 by 20 stack size. So for that weight and size savings uh, and the little bit of extra width that you gain gives you versatility in being able to service your quad. Very, very nice. Um, fat kid, as I understand, who has the bull TGP champion won using this ESC. And let's just compare against some of the popular racing frames. We already saw this uh, against the 533 switchback. Here it is against the Floss 2.1. Here we go against the Floss 3. You can see that the footprint is a bit smaller. Sometimes those smaller footprint racing frames really give you a really nice cornering maneuverability. Think like a Miata on a racetrack. And this is the frame that I ran mostly last season, my last season of Analog, which is the Mayday Quad Works Fusion Kit. I do like that you have a very nice pointy arm that'll offer you some motor protection in those high speed racing crashes. Uh, what do you guys think in the comments? I think this is one of the lightest um, racing frames on the market. Do you think in the comments, are you racing? Are you gonna start racing? What frames are you looking at for 2021 season? This is definitely a compelling option at 46 bucks it's right there at that proper race cost. Thanks guys.